Hi, in this video we will solve the following problem. Consider an exchange economy where individual 1's utility function is x1 plus y1 and individual 2 lexicographically prefers good x over good y. Individual 1 has 4 units of x and individual 2 has 6 units of x so that the total of 10 units of x in this economy. Individual 1 has 8 units of y and integer 2 has 4 units of y, so there are a total of 12 units of y in this economy. We want to find the set of all efficient allocations. So we'll begin by plotting the edge work box. The dimension of the edge work box will be 10 by 12, because there are 10 units of x and 12 units of y in this economy. Now we'll check for efficiency. We'll pick an arbitrary allocation inside the box and we'll check for its efficiency. Let's consider a point such as alpha. Now we'll plot the indifference curve of individual 1 through this point. This is how the indifference curve is going to look because individual 1's utility function is x1 plus y1. Now let's check how individual 1 ranks this alternative compared to other points in the edge box. All these allocations that are lying in the colored region are strictly preferred by individual 1 over alpha. Now we'll check how individual 2 ranks this alternative alpha compared to the other alternatives in the Edgeworth box. Individual 2 has lexicographic preference for x over y. So that means given any two alternatives, he likes the alternative that offers him higher amount of x. So any point or any allocation that lies to the left of alpha will be strictly preferred by individual 2 over alpha and if the two alternatives offers him the same amount of x then he prefers the one with a higher amount of y so any alternative that lies below alpha but not to the right of it will also be strictly preferred by individual 2 over alpha so this is how the preference is going to look so the shaded region gives us the set of all feasible allocations that are preferred over alpha by individual 2. The region lying above the indifference curve of individual 1 and to the left of alpha has this property that if we move to any allocation in this region, then we'll be making both the individuals better off or at least, definitely at least one of them better off without reducing the satisfaction level of the other. For example, consider a point such as beta. Now beta is preferred over alpha by individual 1 because it's on a higher IC and beta is also preferred over alpha by individual 2 because beta offers him higher amount of commodity X. Therefore alpha is not Pareto efficient. As an exercise you might want to pick points on the vertical axis of individual 2 and the horizontal axis of individual 1 and with the same line of reasoning try and figure out that any point lying on these two axes are also not efficient. We have already shown because alpha was an arbitrary choice from inside the box we have already shown that alpha or any other point inside the Edgeworth box is not efficient. So the only things that now remains to show are points on the vertical axis of individual 1 and the horizontal axis of individual 2. So let us pick a point on the horizontal axis of individual 2 such as gamma. If you want to plot the indifference curve of individual 1 this is how they are going to look. These are the points that are strictly preferred by individual 1 over gamma. These are the points which are strictly preferred by individual 2 over gamma. So clearly if we want to make individual 1 better off we'll have to move in this region but if we do so then we'll end up making 2 worse off. If we want to make individual 2 better off we'll have to move in this region but if that's the case then we'll actually end up on a lower IC for individual 1. So that means that there is no way that we can improve the satisfaction level of one of the individuals without reducing the satisfaction level of the other. So that means gamma is efficient. Now let's look at theta. 
this is how the indifference curve of individual one is going to look through theta these are the set of allocations which are preferred by individual one over theta for individual two he is consuming all of x in this economy so the only points that can satisfy him more than theta are the points that lie below theta because they offer him more of y as well so in order to make one better off we'll have to move in this region but moving in this region would mean offering either lower x to individual 2 or lower y to individual 2 now because individual 2 is already consuming the maximum amount of x that is available in this economy at theta so it will necessarily make him worse off if we try and make two better off we'll have to move in this region and offer him more amount of y without reducing the amount of x but that would mean that individual 1 will be now on a lower ic so theta is also efficient because there is no way that you can improve the satisfaction level of one of the individuals without reducing the satisfaction level of the other theta was an arbitrary pick from the vertical axis of individual 1 and gamma was an arbitrarily arbitrary pick from the horizontal axis of individual 2 therefore any point on the vertical axis of individual 1 is efficient and any point on the horizontal axis of individual 2 is efficient so we'll get set of efficient allocations as x1 y1 x2 y2 such that either x1 is 0 so x1 is 0 on the vertical axis of individual 1 or either y1 is 12 so y1 is 12 on the horizontal axis of individual 2 thank you